Hey guys, Chuck here once again for the CheapBastard.net. It's a beautiful late summer day here. I'm sitting under my willow tree, watching the clouds go by, not a care in the world. Now you wouldn't know that just a week ago, a major hurricane blew through here and took out half the electrical system um, for about 100 miles. Down south of us, about two and a half million people are still going a week without power. Why? Because they didn't take advantage of beautiful days like this to prepare for hard times. Now you know there are a few things in life that are certain, death, taxes, and the power will go out. Now we tend to avoid the fact, and we don't want to acknowledge it, at some point during the year the power is going to go out, maybe for five minutes, maybe for an hour, maybe it might be a mild inconvenience, and be an afternoon, or it might be overnight, and it usually happens at the worst time because it's bad weather that usually brings it on. Could be a drunk driver knocking on a telephone pole, but more than likely, it's gonna be due to uh, some sort of weather pattern taking out the electrical system in your area. How prepared are you to go, oh, a day, two days, maybe even up to a week with no power? Is your house ready? Is your sump pump um, gonna be able to pump water out of your basement? All these questions will be answered today. If you follow closely along with me, I'm gonna show you how you can at least start the process of getting your house prepared for auxiliary power in the event of a power failure in your neighborhood. Keep it locked. You know who we are, thecheapbastard.net. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do as you're trying to plan out how you wanna set up your auxiliary power system for your house is start budgeting. How much do you have to play with? What's reasonable for your budget? Do you have $1,000, $2,000, $10,000? And really scale it according to your needs because you don't really wanna break the bank on this. You want this to be implemented effectively without causing a lot of pain and hardship in the household. So I would say a good place to start with for the overall project is anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000. Now, I mean, you can go all the way up from ten to $10,000 or $20,000 and have a system that could run uh, the Sears Tower or something. But for your average house, you really don't need to go that far. So let's start things off. What we need to look at is our generator type, okay? Now, most people have what we have right here, which is sort of a, uh, a camping, hunting style cabin generator, which you might bring out on the weekend. Now, this one here is rated at 4,400 watts, which is okay. Now, in, in terms of understanding electricity, that would be the output equivalent of about 40 to 4,400 watt light bulbs, that easy. Now, in the event of a storm, I'm guessing you're not going to want to run 100 light bulbs in your house simultaneously and let everything else slide. You're going to worry about your sump pump. You're going to worry about your heater, you're going to worry about your refrigerator, and uh, probably something to cook with your stove, uh, uh, ice chest, uh, water pump, some of the amenities that make life livable when power's down. I would say prioritize first. What do you need? The first thing you need, something for your sump pump. If you don't live in an apartment building, you need something to keep that basement dry in the event that the rain's coming down in buckets. Next thing, start thinking about in terms of your water pump. Okay, you're trapped inside, it's either snowing or it's storming outside. You're still going to need water to flush the toilet. You're still going to need water uh, to, you know, make coffee or, or try to have some semblance of a normal life. So, you know, your water pump, your sump pump. Um, are you going to need to take showers? Your hot water heater. You're going to need to think about things like, uh, are you going to need to cook? And that's a little bit on the luxury end of things, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. These are just a few things for you to consider. So now what you're going to do is you're going to um, go around to all your devices and add up. First of all, how much wattage and amperage does each one consume? They should have a tag somewhere on the unit and allow you to, to write down in a notebook what your total number is and start working backwards from there based on your budget. Now what we have here is a typical camping style generator. You'd bring this out on the weekend or up to the cabin. Um, again, this one's at, uh, rated at 4400 watts on the sticker, but always shoot a little lower because what they advertise the output isn't exactly what your running power is going to be. That might be startup power for when it first kicks in, but the actual operating load is usually a little bit lower. Think about 10% to 20% lower. So something like this would cost you maybe anywhere in the ballpark from $350 to $600 in a big box store, or even better, shop in the classifieds, usually off season. You're not gonna find anything in the winter, you're not gonna find anything during the heavy seasons like fall or winter, but maybe during the off season when everybody's relaxed, nobody's thinking about generators anymore, you can get them for about $250, $350, usually about half of what retail is. Now, this is a typical gasoline powered uh, pull start type generator. Runs just like your lawnmower. So, you know, you're going to have to crank on it, so make sure you or your wife or the kids or whoever's going to have to start it has got the muscle power to start it. It's gasoline powered, so it's going to be noisy at the same time, too. And it's going to consume a lot of fuel. It's not the most fuel efficient thing on the block, but it's great to have on standby if you're just running your sump pump or you're just running a few minor devices in the house during a storm. 
Okay, moving up the cost scale. You're looking at a diesel generator. This one here has a rated output of 6,500 watts. Now I'm going to think realistically about 6,000 watts of operating power. Again, the equivalent of 6,100 watt light bulbs. You'll have to do the math. I'm not running 6,100 watt light bulbs when the power goes out, trust me. I'm running the essentials and the things to keep my home still livable, my family comfortable during any kind of massive power outage. Uh, the difference again between this one is it's electric start. You simply turn a key and she'll start right up. Another key factor for long-term savings is it's diesel powered. Now, diesel has advantages over, over gas any day. In generator applications, at least, it'll run longer between fuel ups, okay? And diesel tends to be, mm, these days, about 25% cheaper than gasoline, although it might vary depending on whatever your living situation is and where you are in the world. So, I opted for diesel in this case, and I have gasoline as a backup to run some of the more luxury type stuff, the non-essential stuff. I'm talking about your plasma screen, your radio, the toaster, the hair dryer. We're not going to be making a lot of toaster in the next power outage, but it's something to have on standby in case of a system's failure. So here we have a diesel electric start, and this output, although it's, it's stated at 6,500 watts, I'm calculating in my mind about 6,000. Again, I always shoot a little lower than what's on the label because marketing can be deceptive. Okay, now once you've established your budget and you've known how much you're willing to spend on a generator, you have to factor in what are the essentials of your home that you plan to operate when the power goes out. Is it going to be your water pump? Is it going to be your heat pump? Is it going to be your sump pump? Is it going to be a deep chest freezer like we have here? The refrigerator, the stove? That's all going to have to be scaled in in terms of what your expectations are for what you're going to pay versus what you're willing to live with running and not running in the house. So what I want you to do is you're going to get a notebook and you're going to go around to all of the key operations in your house, whether it be your heat pump, whether it be your furnace, your hot water heater, uh, your sump pump, which is critical. Add up all these things. Look for the labels on them. Add up what the amperage is and what the wattage draw is, okay? And you're going to put all those on a sheet and hand those over to your electrician. Don't worry about any more. He'll do the hard math on this one. You don't need to be a genius. You just need to add everything up, put it on a piece of paper, and give it to him. So now, once you have a qualified electrician come over, and now I don't care how comfortable or competent you think you are, you fixed your grandmother's lamp once, you were able to fix the kid's operation game with a 9-volt battery, if you're not a certified and qualified electrician, don't undertake this yourself. Because not only do you run the risk of setting your house on fire and potentially killing a linesman out on the street, you also run the chance of avoiding your home insurance at the same time, too. If your house burns down, somebody gets hurt along the way, and they find out the work wasn't done by a qualified electrician, you might have lawsuits on your hand. At the minimum, they're not going to rebuild your house. There will be no check in the mail for you. So don't try and take the cheap on this one. What can you expect to pay for an electrician? Depending on how far they have to go in your house, from where they run the panel to where the generator is, how many, uh, how many items you need to run, it's scalable. Could be anywhere as low as $800, could go $1,200, could go $1,500. You need to ask yourself, how much comfort do you want in a lights out situation? What are you able to live with and what are you able to live without? And scale it according to your reasonable budget. Okay, so what we have here is we have the main panel over here. Now this is the panel that drives everything while life is good and everybody's happy and there's a big smiley face on the sun and children are painting pictures of uh, flowers and little fluffy kittens. Now over here is the crisis panel. This is the sub panel which operates everything that we need to operate in a, in a lights out situation. What happens is the electrician will come, he will remove those key circuits which you've identified, water, hot, hot water heater, water pump, deep freezer, all the things we're talking about here, and he will move those circuits over into the sub panel. Now, when the power goes out, you go to the sub panel. You are now going to flick up, uh, flick up the, the lockout switch over switch here. That's going to transfer power from the street as it's coming from the street, and now it's coming from your generator, which might be outside or in the garage or somewhere in the yard. Okay, this serves a couple purposes. By having this lockout switch, it ensures that when the power comes back on, you're not feeding electricity back out to the street, where some poor linesman, some union worker is out there trying to get the power back on for all you poor saps, and he's not going to get shocked out there and won't be able to come home to his kids. So that lockout switch is important, so you're not feeding back out to the street. And what we have here, we have the water pump, we have the uh, a spare plug here for the deep freezer, we have the uh, um, hot water, uh, the hot water tank, and the furnace. So that's enough for us here in our home, at least, to get by. I mean, if we have to do anything special, like cook, we've got a barbecue on the back porch, ample propane, 
uh, more than enough food to get us through. You know, a, a long, uh, a longish term situation. We're not talking Book of Eli type stuff here, but enough so we can keep things going and life will still have some sense of, of normalcy to it all. So just to wrap up, get the sub panel in here, and what happens is you have the switch over that takes place. Then you go to your generator, you start up the generator, the generator carries the load at that point, and you're still smiling and life is going on. Good enough for you, good enough for me. Okay, with the transfer and lockout switch and the sub panel thrown over now, it's ready to receive electricity from the diesel generator. So we verify, we make sure that the power source here is connected. It's got a four pin connector on this one, it's what they call a twist and lock. And uh, and this one, we're set to run, the fuel pump is open, and it should be as easy as one, two, three. Now because Stinkle Vision has yet to be created, you probably can't smell all that diesel in the air. Another key important thing is wherever you locate your generator for your auxiliary power supply, make sure it vents the exhaust outside. Even if you set it in your garage, you've got to open the garage door or move the generator close to where the exhaust fumes can uh, exit the garage or else you're going to have carbon monoxide poisoning and what's the use of having a nice warm house that's comfortable to live in when dad is dead, okay, or mom or anybody for that case. Don't store it in your basement. If you got to keep it in your garage, make sure it's moved towards the uh, bay door and that it can vent out or install some sort of exhaust piping system, uh, which you can set up quickly and easily and which isn't going to leak into the garage and kill the family pets and everybody else who lives there. Got it? Well, there you have it, guys. We've gone through it pretty much soup to nuts. It's not very complicated. Remember, find a qualified electrician along the way, and he'll get you set up in the process. We're taking you through the generator selection portion in terms of having a sub panel and a lockout switch down in your basement, and uh, some of the critical essentials like venting your exhaust and some of these types of things. So all you need is a notebook. Start going around the house. Uh, look at the back of the labels. Add up what the power consumption is and all your devices. Remember, you want watts and amps. That's critical. You can't just have watts in this. Hand it over to the electrician, he'll give you an estimate. Hopefully you can come in on a weekend or on some ordinary downtime, save yourself a little money in the process, and get yourself hooked up. Nature waits for nobody, folks. The lights are going to go out at some point. Might not be today, might not be tomorrow, but at some point the power is going to be go going out, and are you prepared? You don't want your kids looking at you to save the day, and you really got nothing at that point. So get yourself hooked up, and remember, the more you know, the less you need. Right here, cheap bastard. Dot net.